Today on the newscast, the tanker wars continue as Iran blames Israel for yet another explosion at sea and vows to retaliate. Plus, Iran unveils a new missile city while Israel debuts a groundbreaking new weapon. The Middle East never sleeps. Get all the breaking details coming up. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. Yet another very busy weekend in the Middle East. We have an update for you on the tanker wars, the ongoing sabotage at sea between Israel and Iran today, March 15th. An Iranian official said that Iran has the right to respond to the latest in this series of explosions aboard cargo ships. This one came last week aboard an Iranian cargo ship in the Mediterranean Sea. There was no major damage caused, but there was an explosion aboard this Iranian ship. Now the Iranian regime says they have the right to respond. Now, a little bit of background here, folks. On our Friday, March 12th newscast, we told you about a Wall Street Journal report last week saying that Israel has targeted at least 12 Iranian vessels at sea over the past two years. Now, these Iranian ships were reportedly carrying oil and weapons to Iran's close ally, Syria, and the Assad regime there. Israel's concern is that not only will the weapons be used by terror organizations like Hezbollah to target Israelis, but also that the profits from the oil will go to fund terrorist acts and terrorist organizations. So Israel reportedly has taken action using mines to harm these Iranian vessels. None of them has been sunk. There have been no casualties. At least two of the Iranian ships have had to turn back and head to Iran. But Israel clearly sending a message and yet another reportedly explosion in the Mediterranean last week. Now Iran is calling for retaliation. The thing is, you could say that Iran has already retaliated in a sense. We've told you here in the newscast about the MV Helios Ray. That's the Israeli-owned cargo ship that was struck by what the Israelis believe was an Iranian mine just last month on February 25th in the Gulf of Oman. So this is going back and forth now. The war at sea, the shadow war at sea, you could call it the tanker war. Many of these Iranian vessels were apparently carrying oil, but this continues now. Iran is vowing retaliation. It's a bit of a new front, I guess you would say, the front at sea uh, between Israel and Iran, and now cargo ships being targeted on a regular basis. We will continue to keep an eye on this for you. In the meantime, Israel unveiled a what they're calling a groundbreaking new weapon this weekend. It is called Iron Sting, not to be confused with Iron Dome, the anti-missile defense system. Iron Sting is a mortar, uh, and the Israel Defense Forces say it is groundbreaking because of its accuracy. It can be used in urban warfare and limit the amount of civilian casualties. Remember, Hamas and Hezbollah, they're all about urban warfare, fighting in close quarters, in urban areas among civilians. They do it intentionally to all the pro-Hamas and Hezbollah commenters out there who praise them as freedom fighters. These are people who intentionally use women and children as human shields. Israel has very strict rules of engagement. Many times they will turn back. They do not want to harm civilians. Hamas and Hezbollah don't care about human life. So they have no hesitation in putting women and children in front of them and seeing them dead. That's who they are, folks. They are terrorists. They are not freedom fighters. You know, I'll never forget being on the Lebanon border a few years ago. I've been there many times, but on the Israel-Lebanon border, hey, that's where Hezbollah lives and breathes, right there in southern Lebanon along Israel's northern border. And it's a beautiful countryside there. It truly is, but you wouldn't know what's lurking beneath in those homes in southern Lebanon. I was with a former Israeli intelligence analyst who agreed. He said, hey, it looks beautiful, right? But inside those homes are Hezbollah fighters who have literally taken over those civilian homes, store weapons, rockets, missiles in those homes. 
in southern Lebanon. So that's what Israel is dealing with. And because they have such strict rules of engagement, and because they actually have regard for human life, they are developing weapons that will severely limit and reduce any possibility of civilian casualties. Iran, on the other hand, and Hezbollah, on the other hand, again, no hesitation in killing civilians. An Israeli major general said just today at a conference in Israel today, Monday, March 15th, that in the next conflict with Hezbollah here on the newscast, we've called it the Great Northern War, the coming Great Northern War. In that conflict, Hezbollah, Iran's most lethal proxy, based in southern Lebanon, from that base, will be able to target Israel with some 2,000 rockets and missiles per day in the next conflict. Now, folks, rewind to the 2006 war between Israel and Hezbollah. Hezbollah did not have that volume of rockets and missiles launched at Israel on a daily basis. Many, probably hundreds per day, that was enough to essentially shut down a large area of northern Israel. Israelis were living in bomb shelters for weeks. Great cities like Kiryat Shimona in northern Israel. Israelis were driven underground into bomb shelters because of this constant barrage of Hezbollah rockets raining down. Well, this time around, obviously since 2006, Hezbollah has more than replenished that rocket and missile stockpile. According to most estimates, at least... 150,000 rockets and missiles pointed at every inch of Israel. So this time around, 2,000 per day. This major general heads up the Israeli Home Front Command. This is their main task, to defend the home front and to prepare for future conflicts like this. Again, folks, this is coming. These missiles will and rockets from Hezbollah will intentionally, intentionally target Israeli civilians. They have no rules of engagement due terrorist organizations. So that is coming. It will pit Israel against Hezbollah and the Iranian regime to the north in southern Lebanon and in Syria. It's a question out of if, but when. No one wants to see it come, but we are realistic. The Israelis, Israeli officials that I've interviewed are certainly realistic about this. That day of reckoning is coming to Israel's north with Hezbollah and the Iranian regime. In the meantime, along those lines, Iran also, again, a busy few days, right? Today, actually, again, Monday, March 15th, big news coming out today out of the Middle East. Iran unveiled a missile city featuring basically the footage released by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, which is the elite vanguard of the Iranian regime, right? They control the nuclear weapons program, the finances, much of the weaponry, the missile program. I compare them to the Gestapo under the Nazi regime, but perhaps even more influential is the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps. They unveiled this missile city uh, featuring rows on the footage they released of missiles, cruise missiles, rockets, tools for what they say are uh, is electronic warfare as well. This is not a novelty, folks. Iran over the past probably the past six or seven months, has released several videos showing what they call missile cities. Now, apparently, these are underground missile cities, and many of them reportedly dot Iran's Persian Gulf coastline. Now, folks, if you think none of this matters, the Middle East is thousands of miles away from where you live. It does not affect you. Think again, because what happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East. Events unfolding in that region right now will profoundly affect all of us, no matter where we live. Look no further than a story we reported last week here on the newscast. The Houthi rebels in Yemen, Iran-backed of course, targeting Saudi oil facilities. Now you take some of those Saudi oil facilities offline, you will have a major, major increase in gas prices in the United States, where I live, and really around the world, and it will have a profound impact on the global economy. Remember, we are all interconnected right now economically across the globe, for better or for worse. Uh, and such an attack, and that's just one small example, folks, such an attack can have a major, major ripple effect around the world. So we need to be concerned about this. You know, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. That's why we do what we do here at the Watchman Newscast. We try to be watchmen on the wall for you 
for such a time as this. And we really, truly appreciate you tuning in every day, Monday through Friday. Hey, before I leave, be encouraged. I know we're talking about wars and rumors of wars. That's what the Gospel of Matthew talked about in these days that we are living. But God Almighty still sits on the throne. I say it every single day here in the newscast, but I just want to remind you, God is on the throne. He's covering His people, and He will cover His land, the land of Israel, because He neither slumbers nor sleeps. Be encouraged. Stay true to the Lord. Keep praying. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I'm praying for all of you, and I appreciate all of you here at the Watchman Newscast. So until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.